Hey guys, I'm back with my final long-term review for the Axiom 24 liter. So I've used this bag for about two months, and I'll be honest, I knew after about a week that this bag was gonna be great. Uh, so I'm gonna start out with unpacking my typical loadout. Uh, so if you don't care about this, uh, skip to this time code. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I normally have a loadout that's pretty dialed at this point, and I try to keep it as consistent as I could across all of my reviews. I'm honestly incredibly impressed that I could fit this much into this bag for it being 24 liters. I think it has to do with the design and how you access the different areas of the bag and the fabric that it, it's got a little bit of give to it. So you can, you can stuff a little bit more to it and it can stretch out a little. Uh, also, let me say that aesthetically, I'm really into the look of this bag. I think it strikes a perfect middle ground of a tactical look and a business look. Uh, combined with this uh, VX21 fabric and the little black accents throughout, uh, it makes for a super dope looking bag, in my opinion. Uh, one quick note about this loadout in particular is that this happened to line up nicely uh, because we're moving floors in the office, so I had to pack up all of my stuff. I call this my worst case scenario pack out. So, I have this pretty deep fear of being put in a scenario where I get let go and I have to do the walk of shame across the office carrying a box of all of my stuff on the way to the elevators. So I make sure to keep only the stuff at my station that I could fit in my pack. And this is what this looks like. I will never have to carry more than this at any particular time, uh, unless I get a package shipped to work or something. Now, I don't normally pack my shoes daily, uh, and by the way, these are dress shoes and they're size 12s. Uh, these aren't flat sneakers that can compress down to like the size of pancakes. These take up a huge amount of space. So it's impressive that I can fit anything else alongside these things. Okay, let's talk about organization. This front pocket has the perfect amount of space and just enough organization to be useful without adding too much bulk to the pack. Uh, the zipper opening doesn't allow for a full clamshell because uh, you get a little bit of a shelf at the bottom, which is just the perfect size to catch my notebook and hold it firmly in place. It's great. Uh, these little pockets don't have a lot of give, and they're pretty ideal for very thin items. Uh, I do wish they were laid out a bit different because they're so small that you can't really make use of them all uh, due to the overlap. Uh, but, I get, but I get why it is the way it is. If they allow for expandability here, things will start to get too, uh, things will start to get too bulky in this area. Uh, you get some pen loops here, which are always welcome. This larger mesh pocket is perfect for those bulkier items. And it's located just right to avoid having bulky items overlap, creating this sort of unsightly bulge in this area. Uh, there's another pocket behind all these slots uh, that isn't very deep. It has a D-ring to hook your keys onto. Uh, it's kind of a throw pocket back here. Uh, I'd be mindful of throwing bulky items here to avoid having some overlap issues. Okay, so the top quick access pocket is the perfect size to be useful uh, while remaining almost completely out of the way, even when the rest of the pack is fully loaded. I love it. Okay, so let's talk about these other pockets. Now, if you've been following me, you'll know that I have a very strong opinion about pockets that expand inwards and steal volume from the main compartment of the bag. I don't like them at all. So why is it that these don't bother me so much? Uh, you know, I spent some time really thinking it through because uh, I wanted to get to the bottom of it for myself too. So I started to think about what bothers me in these. And I came to a few answers, but it mostly has to do with how quickly I can access my stuff and whether or not I have to move things out of the way to get there. Let's give an easy example, a water bottle. Now, these scenarios are very specific to me, so your, your mileage may vary. If I'm walking home under the sun in the disgusting heat of summer, I wanna be able to swing my bag around, grab my water quickly, and have a drink. Simple, right? Well, if you have an internal water bottle pocket, now you gotta hope there's nothing in your way, and if there is, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna have to put your pack down, open it way up, and grab your water bottle. That's too much work for you to get after your water. It's stupid and I hate it. 
The fact that it's stealing volume from the main area is secondary. It's the effort it takes to get to your things that really gets to me, especially over time. Quality of life, man. That, that's what I'm all about. That's why my reviews take two months. Uh, this is basically a really long way of me saying that these pockets don't bother me so much because I can access all of them from the outside. I don't have to push things out of the way to get to them. Yes, they still steal space from the main compartment, but that only bothers me a little. Uh, because I'm not, if I'm not using these pockets, I can completely forget that they're here. And they happen to have some bonus Molly attachment points, which are very useful. So there's more positive here than there is negative. Uh, a net positive, if you will. And this thing is tall enough that I can still use it as a quick side access pocket, even if I'm carrying a small water bottle in here. Uh, when it's empty, it just makes for a great overall side quick pocket for all kinds of things. Uh, there are also additional attachment points here for some accessories you can buy on their site. Um, I have everything I need here, so I personally don't have a use for extra stuffs, uh, but it's nice that it's there if I ever need it. Uh, this bottom pocket is perfect for my U-lock, but I often struggle to get it in there if I had, to, if I had my bag packed out. Uh, but for my use case, it didn't really bother me because when the U-lock was in there, I almost never needed to access my pack while I was riding. Unless, of course, I had a problem with the bike and I needed to get to my tool roll. I say was, because uh, I got a new bike recently and the rear is a bit thicker, so my U-lock doesn't quite fit anymore. So I moved to a chain lock that I can wear around my waist. Uh, so that actually freed me up a bit in my daily carry, and it's been working really great for me. Uh, I think this pocket uh, could work great in the summer uh, to pack away my sweaty clothes uh, when I change in the morning after my ride to work just to keep it separated from my other clean stuff. Uh, now in the back here, uh, the laptop compartment can be accessed from both sides fairly easily. Uh, this section is not suspended and has pretty weak uh, strip of padding beneath the laptop, so be mindful about slamming your bag on the ground. Uh, the separation from the internal volume is pretty rigid and it feels great. Oh, and I can't forget about these really useful attachment points uh, that are kind of hidden on the exterior of the bag. There's three of them, and they are perfectly placed to help you stay visible while riding. I'm a big fan of these. I'm going to give the organization a strong eight. I thought about a nine, but I started to think about what I've given a nine to before, and that was the Nomadic Pack, which had way more pockets. So I landed on an eight, which is still very good. Okay, let's get into materials. Uh, by pure chance, the week I started to use this bag, we experienced some of the worst rain we've had in a while here. I'm talking sideways rain, where your umbrella is not gonna help you. Uh, when I got to the office, my pants were soaking wet, and I took off my pack and saw that it was drenched as well. I knew this was gonna be the moment of truth. I immediately went after my pack of gum here, uh, because it's kinda like my canary in the cage kind of test. Since it's made of paper and I usually carry it in the external most pockets, I can immediately tell if I'm dealing with the moisture problem. So I'm very happy to say that this bag is the most water resistant bag that I own. Nothing got in at all. The, but the paper was bone dry, nice and rigid, no waviness, no nothing. Uh, so there you go. This VX21 fabric is the truth when it comes to water resistance. Uh, but it's not all peaches and cream, though. Uh, the little bit I read about this fabric is that it doesn't do so well with abrasion wear. Uh, one of the areas I really put this to the test was the bottom pocket where I had to fight daily to get my U-lock in there. It was a tight opening. It was, it was a tight opening, uh, and there was some serious rubbing going on down there. Uh, let's, let's keep it civil here, people. Um, I did notice a bit of fraying going on here. Uh, in the past two months that I've used it. I'm not gonna say it's pure trash now, I'm just saying I'm noticing some fraying uh, due to the constant traffic near that area. It's very minor, but it's noticeable. And I've only noticed it in this spot. Another thing to note about this fabric is that it's pretty loud. I don't know if this comes through at all, but it can sometimes sound like you're digging into a bag of potato chips. It's pretty damn crinkly. Uh, not a deal breaker for me, but just be aware. Uh, the internals feel pretty bare as well. Uh, in some places, it feels like it's just the back of the external shell. Uh, but it's important to make the distinction of it feeling bare versus feeling cheap. It feels strong and durable, definitely not cheap. 
I haven't had any deal breaking issues here. And to be honest, having a plush internal lining would have gone against the overall aesthetics of the bag. It feels tough everywhere. Uh, the, the external zippers are not YKK, but they're quiet and they feel great. And they have this great water guard. Very excellent. Uh, the interior zippers are YKK and they feel fine too. Uh, the zipper pulls are nice and chunky. And if you look closely, the pulls are a little different throughout the bag. It's to help you quickly identify which pocket you're about to open. Now this is such a subtle touch, but also very excellent. It's especially useful uh, near the back where these openings are very close to each other. Now I wanna bring extra attention to this tiny pool. It seems insignificant, uh, and it does a thing that I didn't quite notice at first, but I felt it after a while and it was pretty damn cool. It swivels slightly to adjust to your grip when you open and close this pocket. Subtle, glorious touches, man. It's awesome. Uh, the top of the bag has some hypalon and it's showing a bit of wear, but in a good way. It's really, it really goes with the aesthetic of the bag. Uh, this handle is excellent. It has some great meat on it and it's plenty wide, and it's built in a way that gives you confidence when you grab it. I'm a big fan of this. There's no aluminum hardware here, uh, but after the AEL 222 bag, I learned that I prefer a good smooth experience over having metal. Uh, the plastic here works really well, and I haven't had any issues with the straps getting caught or it being overly difficult to adjust. Uh, the straps are not the seatbelt fabric that I like, nor is it the super coarse kind that makes it too difficult to make adjustments. It's right in the middle and it works really well for the most part. I have something to mention here in the build part of the video. Uh, the back has some foam that's formed to sit directly on your spine. And supposedly these empty spots are for the air, uh, but that never works on any bag. It's comfy and you're going to sweat, so you got to deal with it. Uh, I'm going to give the materials a 10. Yeah, you heard me. Uh, now, let me explain. I mentioned some fraying down here. I mentioned how bare the internals felt. Uh, but none of that was due to cheap materials or triple alt design trying to save a buck. The materials are solid and deliberate. Whether you're a fan of the VX21 fabric or not, it has its strengths and weaknesses like all materials do. But it isn't cheap. Nothing on this bag feels cheap. So there. My first 10 ever. It's pretty crazy. Uh, well done, Triple Odd Design. Damn. Okay, let's get to the build. Almost everything about this bag is right on the money. The bag is super comfortable to wear. The straps default to this curved shape that perfectly hug your traps and shoulders. They're well padded and they feel sturdy. The bag feels rigid against your back when you have the laptop in there, but it's still super comfortable even more comfortable when you don't have a laptop in there, but it maintains some rigidity due to the hard layer that's in there. The sternum strap is fine as well. It can be moved vertically along the notches of the straps here. It's nothing amazing or terrible about it. It's, it's pretty standard fare here. Uh, these load lifters work great, and more importantly, they stay put and I can reach them easily when I need them. Uh, there's a nifty little hook here that keeps it in place. Uh, a minor thing when I'm writing, uh, they do lift up a bit with the wind and uh, when I'm turning my head to check for traffic it does hit my jaw a little bit or rubs up against my jaw a little bit not a big deal at all just an FYI uh, the bag does not stand up on its own but it isn't advertised as such so not a problem just an FYI I do usually throw my tool roll at the bottom of all my bags because it's usually the heaviest thing I carry uh, but it also helps to balance the bag a little bit so even though I can't stand on its own, it isn't flopping around uncontrollably. Uh, one thing that's worth mentioning here is that at least three times, I've had this strap slip out of the plastic fastener thing. I found that it's not the plastic that's the problem, but the amount of meat at the end of this strap. There isn't enough at the end uh, to catch on the fastener, so it just slips right through. It's a small thing, but it's pretty annoying when it happens because it takes me a while to put everything back in there. A pretty major thing that stands out to me over time is that the bag feels super strong and well built. I'm proud to say that it was built in the USA and I did pay a premium for it, but I don't mind it at all when I know it's made local. The seams all feel strong and well enforced in places that will see a lot of wear. 
uh, very thoughtfully designed, and I noticed it every time I used it. I'm giving the build a nine. Uh, despite the minor things I brought up, they're just that, minor. There's just so much positive about this bag that it almost drowns out the very small things that may not go right during your daily use. So that's an eight, 10, and a nine. Uh, I think this might be the highest rated bag I've ever reviewed. And I'll tell you, man, the first day I used it, I knew this was going to be great. It all felt right, right away. Um, the design made sense. The pockets were there, easily accessible. It very quickly became my almost favorite bag. It, it might just be. It's honestly a toss-up with my North Face Access 22 liter. Uh, I still use my Access for my personal laptop and some other non-work things. It, I think it's still stand on its own as the most unique bag of them all. Uh, well, I won't turn this into another review of the Access, but if you want to see it, go check out my channel. Uh, so that's it. I can't recommend this bag enough. Go get it. Pay that premium to support locally made products, man. I'll start working on this to me now, and I'll try to give it hell. I want to see if this insane premium I paid is actually warranted, or if I just paid for a pretty pack with an expensive brand name. I'll see you again in two or three months. Thanks for watching.